Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to Junior Doan's The Spark. I'm Junior Doan, thank you for joining me. Today I will be talking with Melanie Marshall, owner of Happy Pretty Lifestyle Design in downtown Midland, Michigan. Welcome, Melanie. You named your store Happy Pretty. How did you come up with that name? Actually, my friends came up with that name. Um, it was one of the things that um, we were sitting down and I knew I was living in Nashville at the time and knew I wanted to do something that encompassed everything that I loved. Um, you know, the interior design, photography, styling, flowers. And so we sat down and we wanted something that signified what the entire brand was about. And my friend said, it should just be happy pretty. And at first I thought that was a really crazy name, but then they explained to me why they thought that that was the name I should have. And it was because I they're like, Melanie, you are always trying to spread joy. So, and you always make everything beautiful. So happy, pretty. How do you so, spread joy? You in know, their opinion, or your opinion? In their opinion, I guess it was more um, my attitude on things. Um, you know, we've, we all have things that we are dealing with. We yes. all have our storms. And I believe that I was put on this earth to spread joy. Um, and to, you know, to overcome, um, to not dwell. And so I always have believed as well that um, there's always somebody out there that has it harder than me. And so spreading joy is, you know, just random acts of kindness and doing yeah. things for someone else and, and going above, <coughs> going beyond yourself is, yeah, that's how I spread joy, I guess. <laughs> Do you sense when people need that? A little you know, um, not necessarily that people need it. Um, the sensing that I, we all need it. So mm -hmm. it might not be somebody that you're expecting needs it, but it just the random acts, I, I believe, are random acts. It's just for anybody at any time. So um, I've had, you know, instances happen before where I've done something for somebody, and I don't like to talk about what I do. Um, I like it to be more behind the scenes. I believe that spreading love and joy is not necessarily about yourself. It's about someone else. So, um, yeah, I, I just, um, no, say no more. Cause yeah. I have a similar, <laughs> attitude. my attitude is that when you're with me, mm -hmm. we should have, we should take each other higher. Yes, we should either exactly. learn, teach, lay up, exactly. connect. If we're five seconds together, five hours yes. together. Yes, yes. And come away better. Feeling in some better. Way. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. We've got to have a multiplier effect here. Yes. <laughs> and so is this your first store? I had a store years ago called I Do, and it was in Bay City. It was called Designers. It was Designers of Elegant Celebrations, where I focused more on the event styling aspect. Yes. Um, but I adopted a daughter and we had had several um, setbacks before we started a family. And so when we adopted her, I decided I wanted to be a mom. And then the following year, her sister was born, um, same birth parents. And so I said, yeah, I'm not going back to work right now. Right. <laughs> so the store was closed. Yeah, but um, it's, it's always been a part of me. So um, I knew that when the girls were a little bit older, I wanted to get back into it. And, so that's what Happy Pretty started. And how do you keep yourself fresh in terms of design? What, what feeds you or what animates you? You know, I, I am a firm believer in um, classic over trend. So I guess what keeps me fresh is just continuously doing it what I love, not following the trends, but being more about um, my style and what speaks to me. 
Mm -hmm. And it could be something very inexpensive. It could be something that has no monetary value to it at all. It's just more about the, the feeling I get when I, when I see it. I know that it's the right thing for me. So we were arranging flowers before we started yes. the program. <laughs> and I'm saying, oh, it needs a little height. And what about the, you know, mm -hmm. and you're doing this and that. Do you have a sense of rightness? How do you know when to stop in design? It's, it's an instinct. It's just an instinct. Um, I have also believed that sometimes more isn't better, it's just more. So you have to step away from it sometimes. And if you're frustrated with um, the way the design is going, you have to just take a step back and walk away for a few moments even. And when you go back to it, you can see it with fresh eyes. So that's um, my philosophy on things is just taking a moment to breathe before you say, okay, I'm done. So yeah. And do you have a, uh, a certain number of hours where your eyes stay fresh? Oh, if, if you're meaning that, um, yeah, I guess it's, uh, yes, in a design, um, sense. in a design sense, yes. Um, if you look at it for too long, you know it, you can feel it, it starts to feel stale. And so you just, like I said, you just walk away from it for a little bit and um, it could be two hours for something. It could be eight hours. So there's no set time. It's, again, it's more of a feeling and an instinct. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I find I'm one of these pictures of uh, people that walk around and say, the picture's off by a quarter of an inch uh -huh. over here. <laughs> I think some people are more visual mm -hmm. in the sense that registers with them and then you mm -hmm. seek to pay attention. Yes. Are you one of those or are you more just uh, what comes out of me? And um, I'm a little bit of both. I think you have to be. Um, I have to be a little bit analytical about things, but um, again, it's a feeling. It's when I look at something, I know immediately if it's right or if it's it's it needs some help. So um, I I don't really measure much <laughs> anymore when I'm doing my installs, and it kind of makes my clients nervous. But I just walk up to the space and I go, "This is where it needs to go, and that's where we put it." So. Um, I probably should measure, <laughs> no. but, but again, it's something I've been doing it for so long. My mom said I came out of the womb designing, so. Oh, um, what did she notice? Just early on, I, I always had this passion for it. I grew up, I had a grandmother that was a Southern lady and entertained all the time in her home, and we spent a lot of time with her, so I spent so much time where my cousins would be outside, my sister would be outside, and I would just be studying my grandma. Um, she, we always said she was way ahead of Martha's, Martha Stewart's time, and she was. Um, always had this beautiful flair and style to everything that she did, but also the simplicity to what she did. So um, my mom just picked up on that and, and also helped feed into it. How did she um, do that? Oh, goodness. I, I never wanted a Barbie house. Um, I always wanted to make my own Barbie house, so she would buy me uh, scraps of fabric, wrapping paper, things like that to make my walls. Um, she would take me into uh, a Village Green. I don't know if you remember Village yes. Green in Midland. They used to have um, the book nook there, yes. and we would go in there, and I'd get a book, and then I'd also get air plants for my Barbie houses because they needed fresh plants in their <laughs> home. And um, also just... I would plan my own birthday parties. I would decorate for them. <laughs> and she would just let me do that. She would, she just encouraged it, so. Now, do you do that for your own girls? Um, they have very, very big ideas on what they want to do for their parties usually. So sometimes it's sort of honing it in yeah. um, and figuring out what they want. But yes, we, we do that. Um, my daughter Annabelle is always planning things, always creating things. Uh, the first time she really showed an interest was her fourth birthday party. And she <laughs> planned all of that. And for Easter, she planned a parade. And so, yeah, so I see that a lot in her. And then Chloe as well. She's, um, Chloe's much more, she wants to be behind the scenes, um, where Annabelle is a little bit more dramatic. And so she likes going out and, and decorating and styling. She has much more of the creative ideas where Chloe is the one who will be the business woman behind it eventually. So It's <laughs> nice that you uh, adjust yourself to their proclivities. Yeah, you have to. You have to. <laughs> yeah, well. Um, you know, you do. I, I've, 
raising daughters is such a um, such a gift, such a blessing, and knowing that they're not the same person. Um, they may come from the same blood, but they're not the same person, and so you have to figure out um, who your child is and encourage that, for sure. Between your husband and you, who does the disciplining? Me. <laughs> <laughs> My husband travels all the time, so he's a softy when he comes home. <laughs> yeah, he wants peace yes. and love. Yes, yes. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. And do they get involved in the store at all? They do, they do. They're also one of the reasons behind Happy Pretty. Um, mm. I, I use them in a lot of my... Um, a lot of my marketing because um, they just have that natural... Um, connection for me. Mm -hmm. So they are, they are there. They love to run the register. Um, Annabelle, from the time she was itty bitty, would go into the restaurants that had the, the paper where you could draw, and she would draw out floor plans. Her favorite shows are um, the home improvement shows. <laughs> so I think she has a gift for design, and, and Chloe as well. Chloe's very artistic. Do you let them use the internet at all for these kinds of things, or apps, or? I do. I do. Um, I monitor everything very closely, um, but I do allow them to have some freedom with that as well. So, yeah. And what, going back to the store, what would you like to see in five years? It be. Oh, <clears throat> you know the the store is becoming more design driven. I've been noticing that uh, we have a wonderful group of clients and customers who've become friends as well. So I'd like to see that continue to grow, and I'd like to see us continue to give back to the community. Um, we do a lot with that. Um, what do you do with that? Oh, just, again, just constantly finding who needs help and who we can help and who we can um, just charities and, you know, Open Door and all of those different places. Everybody needs help. Everybody yeah. needs something, and I feel as a business owner, that is very much a part of being a successful business owner is knowing that it's not just you, it's the community you're in that makes it work. So, yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I, I, you know, business sometimes has a bad name, mm -hmm. but when you hear this, it's like angels in disguise <laughs> <laughs> because they employ, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you say you put some time and effort and money into, mm -hmm. into helping others yes. because we all need help. We all need help, and we all need to understand that, like you said, um, you know, beauty in business um, not necessarily has the best reputation. Yes. And so people understand that it is not about spending a ton of money on something. It's, it's about um, more the feeling that it evokes when you do find that perfect thing that you want for yourself and to treat yourself once in a while. But it's also, um, you know, I, I believe that always should have fresh flowers in your home and it doesn't have to be something you spent your money on go out and cut an oak branch from your yard and put that in a vase and so it's just I try to give tips on that as well and encourage our customers to to seek out their best life so, so I've always been a fan of beauty uh, mm -hmm. and, and generally speaking mm -hmm. um, because I feel it's quite spiritual when yes. things are in alignment or proportionally right or yes. shaded right or whatever, mm -hmm. your, my spear, not to say yours, mm -hmm. animates and grows. And I feel an inner and outer harmony, mm -hmm. but I don't know that beauty in action or beauty in design is really celebrated right now. I agree. How do you see it? I believe it's much more celebrated and accepted than it has been in years. Um, I, I remember when I started designing, um, or that I wanted to design as a career, um, even going into college was encouraged not to do it. I was very much discouraged for doing it. They said, you're never going to find a job here. Um, Michigan is not known for that. You're going to have to move south. <laughs> and so I, for the first year in college, said, well, I, I can't do design because I'm not, never going to get a job. And it was almost as if somebody had just taken my <laughs> spirit away. Yeah. And so I'm seeing a lot more. You're seeing through the media especially is becoming much more accepted and much more of a um, celebrated profession. And so I'm, I'm hoping that that continues with the TV shows. And, you know, I'd like to see the TV shows be much 
more about the quality of the, pr of the design rather than, um, I don't want to see it get so blown up that, that everybody has a TV show and everybody has, you know, I, I would like to see it become more about the quality and the, the design itself. So um, in the story behind, I love people that have a big heart. Nate and Jeremiah by design is one of my favorites and the stories and the heart that they do, that they design with, I think is so important. So the quality of the show is important to me. Do you find that your clients are comfortable with different colors <coughs> and yes. have allergies? Do you, have you ever figured out why some like one and some like another? Or yeah. dislike? Yes. Uh, it's important to me. Anytime I go into a client's home, I feel that if I walk out of that home and they, the home looks more like me than them, then I haven't done my job. Um, every time you go into a client's home, it's important that you um, discover who they are and how they live in their home. Um, things that are important to them. That's what needs to become important to you as a, as a designer. You might think to take and and bring your own beliefs into it um, to a degree, but also to really listen to your client. And everybody has their own story, and, and that's what I believe that as a good designer, you need to be able to, to show is their story, not yours. Well, what, what is the, an example <coughs> of a story? Um, you know, I guess as far as a client story. Yeah, how, yeah. how what does learning their story mean? Actually, what uh, is learning their story, for? just how they, again, how they live their life, how they, how, how they want to live in their home, um, their, their outdoor activities, their extracurricular activities, how many children they have, um, how are they living in their home with their children, um, you know, where is the place that they always seem to go to, where is the hub of their home, some people it's their kitchen, other people it's curling up on their big sofa, so it's a matter of, um, finding out how they live in their home and, and making that very much a part of your design. And do you do that through questions or observations? Through questions and observation, both. Um, you find that everybody is willing to, to share their story with you. So, um, you know, obviously through question, um, but a good designer, I feel like, can walk into a home and automatically see what's most important. <laughs> so, um, organization to some, others, again, it's, you know, the kitchen is the most important. They want that big island. They, they all sit around the island and they eat their food and they, they conversate and they, you know, that's their most important area where others it's, it's curling up and watching a show and that's where they have their family time. So that's where, you, yeah. Sometimes I feel <coughs> if I consult with them, I say like you or anybody really, mm -hmm. it's I want them to elevate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Me. Yes. <laughs> or the visually. Yes. And uh, translate the feeling into reality. Yes. And that's hard to do. I think it's hard for them to get my story. I think it's hard to get another person's story within, it's almost like you're driven between, not pride, but maybe self self-regard mm -hmm. on what you will do by way of design versus mm -hmm. getting the person's story. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Anyway, I've sort of noticed that over the years, mm -hmm. that, um, that it's, it's just hard. You have to start with where the designer is. <laughs> well, and that's, that is the designer's job, is to take it to another level from what they're expecting. Um, you know, you were asking for an example. We have a client who wanted something fresh and new for their home. They didn't want to spend a bunch of money, so it was, but their kitchen was very important to them, so it was more painting the cabinetry. Um, you know, quartz countertops, white subway tile that was classic, but we did a bright, vivid blue in there, and it's absolutely beautiful and stunning, and it more reflects the clients um, and their young family and how they live. They're a very colorful, fun family, and so it's also not being afraid to jump out of that box as well. For you? For me and for them. And um, for the clients? Yes, absolutely. They have to trust you. Absolutely have to trust you. And so we take time to develop that trust before we actually do the initial design, um, like purchasing the, you know, the pieces that are going to be going into the home. We take the time and really listen to the clients before we do any of that part of it. It's a lot of meetings and, and sharing ideas before we do the actual But how do you purchasing. work? Do you have <coughs> people who upholsters recover furniture mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. painters or... 
Uh, do they have to contract out for certain aspects like the subway tile? It's, <coughs> it's dependent on their budget. Um, you know, if they're wanting us to do the subcontracting and all those things for them and do the project management, then of course there's a fee for that. So we're always mindful of that when we're dealing with our clients is here's what we what we propose yeah. and this is the budget if you want us to handle it and this is the budget if you would like to contract your own. But we do have contractors that we work with. We have a painter that we absolutely love and a, um, a carpenter that we love and, and trust and so we, we've built a team of people um, that work with us closely and um, if we, if their budget doesn't really include us doing that for them, um, we still suggest and recommend those contractors. And so they're still keeping in touch with us regardless. I so, see. So yeah. how much of your life is divided between motherhood and, uh, I don't want to call it the profession, the mm -hmm. store, the design, the flowers? Yeah, they're not divided. They're very oh, much, they're very much all, all encompassing. Um, I, yeah, it's um, my children are involved in every part of it. They're at the store with me constantly. Oh, um, they are. They are involved in the design aspect of everything. I'm always asking them their opinions on things. And so, and because I have such a creative mind, it just never shuts down. So we're constantly, um, you know, I'm constantly talking to them about things and including them in conversation. And um, because, again, it's something that they're passionate about as well, or at least they seem to be at this time. If it changes, then it changes. But um, they like being involved in that. And so um, I feel like there's no division. It all kind of just jumbles into each other. It's... <laughs> It's, it's sort of a circus, but, you know, we balance it. Are, are they at school here in Midland or elsewhere? They're in Midland schools. Oh, yes, so it's they're not Midland so far. Schools. It's not so far. Um, and, you know, like I said, it was a long time before I decided to jump back into it. I think Annabelle was 10 and Chloe was 9 before I decided to start designing again um, professionally. And I started that while I was living in Nashville. So I, I got back into it in Nashville and then... Um, we anticipated staying down there. I didn't anticipate moving back. Um, but when my mom passed away, it was too hard to be gone anymore. So we moved back to Midland and, um, and I decided I couldn't go back to shopping at just a couple of places. We, Midland, it was time for me to um, open myself back up to running another business and bringing Happy Pretty to life. So, yeah. Uh, do you own the building? I do not. I have a wonderful landlord, so <laughs> I'm fortunate for that. Um, I do not own the building, but I love that building. <laughs> you have a long lease? Um, we do. We do. We have a, a good lease. So, and it's, it's so a, you can have a future there? I can have a future there if I so choose. Yes, absolutely. They're, um, they're wonderful people, so I'm blessed. Well, I see you growing and growing and growing. I, I think you're a huge addition to downtown. Thank you. Thank a positive you. addition. Thank you. And I appreciate that. In, in every way. Do you, is your customer base in this area, or including Bay City, or mostly um, town? We have some in Bay City. We have um, a couple of clients that are closer to Chicago area. Um, we have clients in Nashville. Um, I would love to be able to travel more for our design and do larger projects. Even, I love California. I love Nashville. I love um, the East Coast. So um, we've talked about traveling more and Catherine, my assistant, and I doing more outside of the store. Um, still, you know, running the store, but having somebody that's in there on a day-to-day -day basis where we are free to travel and do more design work. Explain so. how you would get that going, a presence in the East, a presence in California. You know, I think it's just making the connections. Um, and right now we're, we're working on that. Um, it's been really hard for me to balance it all. Um, it took off a lot faster than I had planned. And so um, trying to balance it has been, you know, we've been open for two years. The store has been. Uh, I've been designing for about 25. So um, not anticipating how busy the retail part of it was going to be. Um, I, I finally am able to take a breath and move forward with what it is that we're wanting to do outside of it. And that's going to be, it's probably going to be about another year or so before we see um, our contacts in California and in Nashville and out east um, where, where we're starting to produce design, but we're hoping that that happens. Floral soon. design or house design? A little bit of everything. Um, you know, we have clients that um, we're doing weddings for, events, 
and um, I've taken it on now where I'm not just doing the flowers we are becoming more exclusive with the events where if you're hiring us we're doing the graphic design um, helping with site locations all of those things so it tells a complete story rather than just putting some flowers on on a table that um, we didn't have a part of connecting the story to so um, and in same with interior design and event design I believe it has to be about the client's story rather than your own so I like having that um, the event design be more exclusive now oh I just love that <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> I, I love the entrepreneurial <laughs> side I love the full concept side yes, yes. I, I f love running the details yes. I love accommodating the view of the person but be mindful of their budget that yes. is just generous uh, and Thank rare. You. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very rare. Speaking of one who's been down that path a few times, but valuable, but yes. really valuable. Yes. So we've learned a, a lot here. One is, um, I think, to live um, a life of meaning. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. The G really is taken with this idea of not only giving joy, but spreading joy and mm -hmm. being a sort of a force for good, mm -hmm. whether through her business and design or helping people in need because we're all in need, or <laughs> you know, helping with her children and respecting theirs difference. A lot to learn. So go out and learn and be good and give joy and I'll see you next time. Be good to someone you know and someone you don't know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. To contact Junia, Send her an email at juniadonesthespark at gmail.com. For more information, program schedules, and news about future guests, go to www.juniadonethespark.com. Thank you for joining us. See you next time on Junia Dones the Spark. Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you.